Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. The Linux command sysctl is used to modify and view kernel parameters in real time. So, uh, you know, all the parameters are going to be under proc sys and, uh, you know, proc fs is required for this to work. Now, if you want to show everything, you can type sysctl a. That's going to give you all the parameters on your system and their current values. So you can scroll up a ton of stuff here. Um, you know, I have this zoomed in really close so you can, you know, everybody can actually read the text in this video. Um, that, but you could also can't view them all at once. Anyways, a bunch of parameters there. Now you can load values from a default config file. Now the default config is going to be your, it's going to be etsy sysctl.conf. So that's your default config. So let's take a brief look at this real quick. So you can look in this file, a lot of disabled stuff. You can tab down through here. And I believe I don't actually even have anything set in here, but here's some examples of setting parameters like net IPv4 conf all log martians uh, you know kernel sys request 438 you could uncomment these to uh, set these values so these are kernel, kernel parameters you could uh, uncomment anyways that's a, that's the default config value now if you want to load all the values from your, your default config file um, you can type sysctl p and that will load all the values in there right away. So just like that. So if I had added values into here and I wanted to apply them immediately, just type that command right there, right? Now, if you wanna load them from another config file, you, you could do something like this. And uh, you know basically just specify the config file. We don't wanna do that right now, but you, you could do that if you wanted to. Now, if you wanna specify a specific parameter, you can do something like uh, this right here. Oops, um, did not copy the right thing. So yeah, right here, sysctl, then vm dirty expire centisex. So we can check the value for this. And that is 3000. Now let's say if you wanted to set that value, you just say equals, and instead of 3000, we could do 3001, right? And um, okay, so I'm going to need root permission. May as well become root now. So, anyways, um, yeah, let, let's just try setting that right now. I'm going to copy, paste, and yeah, I kind of messed up copying and pasting there. Anyways, here we go. Set that value to 3001. Right, and now when we check it, just don't assign a value in order to check the current value. Check it and we can see it's 3001. Now let's set it back to 3000 and just check the value again. It is now 3000. So that's how we modify kernel parameters in real time, right? So, you know, you can modify them in real time like this. If you bounce your system, they're gonna go away. So that's why you would save them inside. If you want them to survive a reboot, put them inside the config file and uh, then just load whatever's in the config file. Or you could just directly set the value and then edit the config file so it stays after reboot. Any case, um, you know, if you just wanna print the value, like see here, um, we have the variable name and the value. But if you don't wanna parse that out in a script, if you're, if you're doing this from a script and you don't wanna parse it out, um, you can avoid that by typing a dash n, right? dash n will only give you the value right there, a whole lot easier to parse for a script, right? So um, let's see, if you just want a list of parameter names, you do a sysctl, oops, you know, sysctl, now remember sysctl dash a will give you all the parameters and their values. But if you just want a list of names and you don't care about the values, you can do an uppercase n. That's just gonna give you all the names, right? So that's a handy thing to be able to do also. Let's see if that works with a lowercase n. So there we go, you can just get the values themselves. Not really useful unless you rely upon the order. Not sure how well that would work. So generally you're not gonna to wanna to do that. But if you want a list of, of uh, all the variables, this is a good way to do that, right? So um, let's see, so append a value to a config after setting it. Okay, so one thing you can do is run a command like this. 
you can say sysctl net ipv4 ip forward equals one so you're setting the value of net ipv4 ip forward to one um, so this part of the command will run this command setting that value immediately but then you're taking the output of it and you're appending it to the default config file so that it will it will survive reboot so this is another way you could achieve that same result so let's try this so there we go we've run that so now that variable is set. Now let's just check the variable just to see the value. We can see live in the kernel right now, the value is now set to one. And let's take a look at our config file real quick. And hold on here, yeah. Um, let's just look inside here and jump to the bottom of the file and you see, uh, yeah, see highlighting, syntax highlighting is not ideal i would want this to not be gray but what are you going to do anyways you can see this is not commented out um <clears throat> but uh yeah you see we appended this to the end of the file and now upon reboot this will be the value that is in there now i actually don't want this set in my kernel so i'm going to remove that and save it and then i am going to uh you know i i didn't even have to yeah if i can't reset one problem with this you can't I could reset that and append it to the config file, but then I could have two values in there. So had I not edited the file, so yeah, it, th this type of way of you know appending like this is, is limited. So you got to be careful with what you're doing. So um, anyways, I'm going to set it to zero now, and I've already removed it from the, from the file, so it's going to be zero when I reboot. Okay. So anyways, a couple more quick examples. Um, Let's, you know, first I want to check swappiness. One common, uh, one common kernel parameter is swappiness. So VM swappiness, it's currently set to 60. Let's say if we set it to 40, we can set swappiness to 40. And then we can go ahead and uh, set it back to 60 because I don't want to change anything right now. And there we go, set back to 60. So there you go. Now, um, I have a bunch of, uh, you know, if you check the link in the description, I have a bunch of other parameters you might want to use, may or may not be helpful. Um, also, some other things I wanted to show you. So, configs aren't always only read from the default location. Configs may be read from other locations um, when using, okay, so this is more going to be when you're using the dash dash system um, parameter. So, let's see, system, it will load, it, it um so if you do sysctl dash system now this is oops, system it's going to load all settings from all configuration files right so there are a bunch of other locations that it, it loads it, it may load from in in this specific order i believe so um i'm gonna run these commands i'm gonna I'm just going to run these one at a time just to show you what files are here. So now in the in the document that's linked in the description of this video, I did this on Debian system. I'm on a Ubuntu system right now. It should be pretty similar, but right here, all these files, basically anything under etsy sysctl.d, all the conf files under here may or may not be loaded. So what, what else? Anything under run sysctl.conf? So could be look, oops, I am not pasting that right. So these could be nothing there, but um, if anything were there, it could be loaded by that command also. And let's check here. So anything under here could, could also be read. Um, so nothing there. And let's see, do we have anything under here? This location right here, and if you want to, and there we go, here's a few config files that may be loaded. So just be aware of those. And if you look at lib sysctl.dconf, um, copy this, paste it in here. There's another location with more config files that can be loaded. And finally, obviously you have your default config file right here. Stuff can be loaded from there, right? So check the link in the description for these actual paths and the command. All the, you can just copy paste the ls commands for this. And you can check my example output in the link in the description. So, uh, you, you know, go check that out.
But uh, this is basically everything I wanted to show you for the sysctl command. Now, um, if we wanted to get into individual um, parameters you might set, that's a topic. You know, each of those deserve their own video for the most part, and uh, maybe one um, combined video for system tuning in general. But that kind of goes beyond the scope of this video. So this is everything I wanted to show you for this command. So uh, yeah, that's basically everything for today. Remember, check the links in the description for more info. Hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this. We also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding, hardware, software, servers, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.